All right, so this video is Asthma Problems Part 2, uh, and I'm literally filming this the same day that I filmed Part 1. Today is January 2nd, 2021. Um, right now, it is nighttime. I am in a hotel, and um, it's been rough. It's been rough. <laughs> It's been rough like it's always been, but, but let me explain, uh, so I went to the hospital, um, I was having trouble breathing, but, uh, but, but I'm actually, excuse me, but before that point, um, my parents got a new headboard and, um, <clears throat> They got that installed because if you guys are not aware, uh, we had a bug problem and um, we had to get the the house treated. So we did that. Um, because of that, uh, we got the house treated at around this time, almost like three days ago now, um, on New Year's Eve. And today's January 2nd, night time, yeah. Um, but <sighs> couldn't breathe. Just couldn't breathe at all. So uh, I went to the hospital. And I was scared because I don't have insurance. Uh, I do have uh, a Medi-Cal case that's pending. Um, so I was scared, but I decided my health, you know, is more important than... Uh, than worrying about money. Because uh, money comes and goes, you know, but your health... <coughs> <coughs> your health is truly important. Uh, so I did go to the hospital, and I couldn't breathe at all. So they took my oxygen levels. They said that my oxygen levels were fine. Um, I persisted. I, I told the doctor, look, I still can't breathe. I don't know what it is. So, he insisted that we do an x-ray, and I did. I did the x-ray, and the results came back fine. So, um, I was I was really confused, and, uh, and that was just only about, like, two and a half hours ago that this happened, uh, that I was at the hospital. So, we went back home. Uh, my parents picked me up. They prescribed me prednisone to deal with my asthma. Um, but one thing that is quite interesting is, um, when I was a kid and I would go to the hospital, uh, they would, when I was having asthma problems, they would do a breathing treatment with a nebulizer, uh, where they would administer albuterol into like this device that, uh, turns it from a liquid to a gas so that it's easy to inhale. As you can see, I have the hospital bracelets on right now. Um, and, and when I was at the hospital, that's what they do when I was a kid. But when I was at the hospital, I asked for that to be done, uh, at like the last moment I was like, well, can I at least have a breathing treatment? You know, because I still can't breathe. And he told me that because of COVID, uh, they actually don't do that anymore. And the doctor specifically told me they stopped doing that about nine months ago. Um, so that's scary. And, and, and the reason was, is he said something about the nebulizer, how it, um, I guess it does something to the air, which, which can make COVID, uh, more contagious. I don't know, like for the patient who's using the nebulizer or, you know, the air that's in the room or something, because you're breathing in air from this machine and then breathing out and then breathing in air and then breathing out. Anyways, they said the hospital stopped stopped doing breathing treatments for people. Um, so that scared me. But uh, I am going to look into buying my own nebulizer. I looked online. They're only about $50. Some are a little bit more. Some are a little bit less. Um, but uh, albuterol uh, is prescription only. It's not over the counter, which is unfortunate, you know, because asthma is pretty quite common uh so for that to be not over the counter 
you know, getting a prescription could be difficult if you don't have insurance, if you don't have a primary doctor. Um, but yeah, so I went back home. Apparently my oxygen levels were fine. I didn't, I didn't, at this point I was completely confused. Um, and I remember uh, my stepdad saying something about the pesticides, uh, how they kill the bug. He said that the little chemical is, is, is like barbed wire and it gets attached to the bug and then it gets stuck like in the bug's joints and then they can't move and then or they bring the pesticide back to the nest. Um, <clears throat> so it clicked in my brain. I was like, I'm breathing this, I'm breathing this barbed wire, you know, chemical, this, this pesticide, this toxic chemical in. And I kid you not, I was in the house for not even more than five minutes. I used the restroom, I grabbed water, um, and then I actually went out to the car to eat my food because we had got fast food at Chick-fil-A, and I started wheezing. Uh, and at that point, it was just... <sighs> at that point, it was really depressing, you know, because you know, I went to the hospital, I'm thinking in my mind, great, now I have some bill that's on its way, I don't know how much is going going to be, I don't have insurance, I don't know how I'm going to pay it, they can't even help me at the hospital, and then I come back home and my asthma kicks in immediately, it's like, it was uh, really tough, it was, it was mentally and emotionally and just it was really, really, really tough. So I went on my phone and I typed in, how long do pesticides stay in the air? And, um, it, you know, based off of what I read, they said it could, could linger in the air anywhere from 16 to 60 days. And, it, and I had cleaned everything in the house. I vacuumed the floors, I removed all the clothing before the pesticide treatment was began. Um, so I, I, I threw my sheets in the washer, but I just couldn't stay in the house any longer because I could smell it. Like I could smell the pesticide in the air, you know? Uh, and it like burnt my nose. And I, I just knew that I couldn't sleep there again, you know, because the reason why I went to the hospital today was because last night it was so, it was just so difficult to breathe uh, because of the pesticides that I know now, you know. Um, and this is a tough time. Uh, it, the, the pesticide treatment costs $1,300, okay? Uh, you know, my stepfather is the one with the job. Um, and now I can't even sleep in my own house. Tough. So my situation now is, uh, I'm actually in a hotel, as you can see. It's a pretty nice hotel. I've got my own bed here. Uh, it's extremely beautiful, and I am going to be filming uh, another video in the morning out here, because guess what? I got my own balcony. You'll see more of that in the morning, but it is quite beautiful out there. <laughs> it's quite beautiful out there. Uh, and yeah, but so my mom, you know, she got me this hotel. And um, like I said, it could linger in the air from anywhere to 15 to 60 days. So uh, I still don't know how I'm going to deal with this, but the uh the situation is is that I just can't return home for some time for quite some time uh yeah but uh you know tonight I took my inhaler I could breathe now <sighs> finally I could breathe like <sighs> you know it's it's nice and smooth there's no wheezing uh so that's you know that allows me to go to sleep and just be at peace, being able to breathe, you know. Because if you're someone who doesn't have asthma, you take breathing for granted. Um, 
but yeah, the pesticide truly did uh, turn out to be a big problem, you know, for me with asthma, and I'm relatively healthy, you know, I used to be overweight when I was a kid, I used to eat really bad, I used to drink sodas, now I only drink water, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, not only is it harmful to humans, uh, pesticide kills, you know, not only does it do what it do, kill bugs, that's what it's meant to do, but it could be harmful to other ecosystems as well, like fishes or, or a dog or something, you know, there's some dogs that have died from, like, eating, I don't know, just herbal pesticides that are sprayed on grass or something, um, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's the situation, it's tough, life is tough, life will throw you some curveballs, um, if you have asthma, just know that you're not alone. Uh, and I feel you. I feel you. You know, asthma is not uh, an easy thing to deal with. It's really not. It makes life difficult, you know. But but there's plenty of other things that also make life difficult. And there's even worse things. Uh, so, yeah. But that's it. That's all. Uh, you know, it is interesting that the hospitals stopped doing the breathing treatments. Um, even the hospitals are completely backed up. The doctor told me, he's like, uh, he said, I, cause I told him he's, he told me, he's like, if you have trouble breathing, just come back here. Uh, but, but he also told me, you know, that all the beds are filled. So e even if like, let's say I just needed to have my, my airways opened or something, I couldn't even get a bed because they're all filled, you know, be, with patients who seriously do need those, uh, those beds, uh, specifically probably ventilators, you know, uh, to stay alive. So, but yeah, <laughs> this, I've talked a lot. It's, it's been, it's been, a it's been a long day. <laughs> been a long day I really do just want to rest now but uh, I had to share this experience uh yeah so I I'm going to say goodbye I'm going to watch some tv relax uh and I'm actually also going to uh look into how much a cleaning service would cost because I'm thinking about getting the house cleaned uh and having people come on through and I don't know, just, just to clean the house, to get that air, the pesticides out of the air. But I don't even know if I'll be able to fix that because they said it could last uh, uh, two months, you know. <sighs> All right. Uh, all right. That's enough for me. <laughs> Everyone stay healthy, stay safe, and I am out of here. All right. Good night.